I can't stand Okay, can everyone hear? Yeah. Good. All right, good deal. All right, let's see here. I'm not going to be able to see some of this. Hang on. Okay, so we'll get started real quick. Um, I had a couple of things I want to go through just real quick. Take two seconds. And then we'll rock and roll with the meeting. So, okay, so I wanted to congratulate a few people. I know probably the pictures are over here. Okay, but anyway, uh, you can see. We had some people in the month of April that did um, get demo bonuses, right? So I want to just congratulate Margo Dean, $2,000. Way to go, Margo. All right. We have job, Crystal Margo. Bennett and Jessica Dedrick with uh, 1000 Way to go, ladies. Yay. Good job. And we had Eddie and Kelly that did qualify for 500 So way to go, Eddie and Kelly. All right. Go, so, Eddie. So um, remember, they get paid, you get paid every month. You do the set number of demos. And some of the people, you know, this is how they pay all their bills with this bonus right here. And then the rest of the month, they're able to put money in the bank or whatever. So off of what they sell. So this is the guaranteed demo pay uh, just for uh, getting out there and hustling and doing demos. You know, we had two people today, oddly enough, that they, uh, they didn't run their demos today, right? And the reason that I think they didn't is because they made some money over the weekend. And since they made some money, there's really no need to go make more money. I have enough to pay all my bills. And so I'm not going to run a demo tonight. Well, you know, it's like I told those guys, you know, if you sold some over the weekend and you end up winning a demo bonus like Margo did. Okay. So let's say Margo sold 20, right? That's like making a hundred dollar bonus on every one she sold the whole month. You know, and like Jessica, if Jessica sold 12 or 13, it's like making almost a hundred dollar bonus on all your sales. And so again, you're giving up free money by not getting your demo bonus in every month. All right. But again, congratulations to those ladies. All right. So let me just give you an update. This is part of what happened last week. Again, let me move this around a little bit because I got a feeling it's maybe blocking some of you guys. Um, let me just do that, all right? So last week we showed the rainbow 60 times. Uh, Ryan, anyway, it's not the whole week. I'm not sure what, what went wrong here. Oh, this is just May. I'm sorry. So this was from, um, I'm sorry, this was from Friday till uh, yesterday. That makes sense. This is just May, all right? We've shown the rainbow 60 times, sold 32 of them. All 32 of them had good credit, right? I don't know what the percentage is on that. We have a math teacher on here. He probably could quickly figure it in his head, but it is better than 50% of what we demoed bought the rainbow uh, since Friday. Okay, pretty cool. Let me give you some, uh, some highlights, some people that are doing really good. I want to start with uh, Jamie and Carolyn. Caroline, excuse me. They have shown the rainbow three times and sold all three of them. Um, Chris Mergita has showed seven and sold five. Looks like Jessica has showed three and sold two. And Margot has showed five and sold three. Eddie and Kelly are two for two. Jenna, which is a new lady, has shown four and sold two. And looks like Shannon and Mike Covington also knew two and two. And then we have Ben Hefner. He's shown two and sold two. So uh, good job, guys. We're open for business, I guess is what we're trying to say. Ryan's doing something. Hold on. It shouldn't be doing that, it shouldn't be doing that guys. What are you talking about on the phone? Hold on. We're having technical issues. Whitney, I can see you. Jessica, I can see you driving. I don't know if you guys can see me anymore. We're good with or good what? Yeah, we're good. So we're open for business, all right? I don't know if you guys know that or not, right? Uh, we're open, right? 
So uh, let me just remind everybody that we have the time to shine. So it's hard to remember all these contests. I mean, it's like there's so many. It's like they're almost too many, right? Uh, but remember, everybody does three demos. Start This started mon uh, yesterday, from what I understand. So everybody that does, maybe it didn't. Maybe it started, no, I'm sorry, started Friday. So it's Friday to Thursday. You want to hear? So everybody who did three hear? demos is automatically in uh, eight drawings. There's going to be eight winners of $250 each. The first drawing for eight people, for eight winners is going to be this Friday, May the 8th. So let me just be more clear about that. On this Friday, May the 8th, which is like three or four days from today, Rexair, the manufacturer, is going to have eight drawings that one day where eight people are each going to win 250 bucks. All right, cool. So the way you get in the drawing is you did three demos this past Friday, which was May the 1st, till Thursday, two days from today, which would be May the 7th. So everybody in that seven days that does three will be in a drawing for, you know, eight, eight drawings actually for 250. Anyway, then everybody that does three demos this Friday all the way until next Thursday, which would be the 14th, you will be in eight more drawings, which will be held on the 15th for $250 more each. Okay. So also every time you sell a rainbow, make sure that you post your photo on time to shine uh, rainbow, right? It's the rainbow, actually rainbow time to shine. Make sure you post your empty box photos. And I've been seeing just tons of photos and trying to comment on everybody's that I can. Sometimes I miss yours, I apologize, but I'm so proud of everybody obviously. And so I try to comment, but just for doing that, for selling a rainbow and posting your photo, you're gonna be in the draw and we're giving away, um, they're doing four drawings this Friday for five hundred dollars each, and each photo you put on there of you selling a rainbow gets you an entry, right? So if you've sold two, then you have two tickets, and again, there's going to be four winners this Friday of five hundred dollars each. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too confusing, and it's every week during the month of May. Also, uh, as I said when we did our uh, meeting Thursday. 37% of our business last month, which was April, actually came from surveys, right? So let's just look at what we've got up for surveys. And, and I've had some people forgetting to do this, and I hate that because I hope that that doesn't cost these people um, a, uh, a camping set. But we have a 22-piece uh, camping um, package. It includes a four-man tent. Uh, it includes two sleeping bags, two mats a lantern, two pillows, and two chairs. It's in a neat little uh, uh, package. We've got it over here on display uh, here in the office, but just for doing 14 demos, you're gonna get that out of my, automatically for free just for doing 14 demos, provided that on each one of those 14 demos, not only do you post on Facebook, but they go on there and they tag 20 homeowners as you can see in the photo here on the screen, make sure that they tag 20 homeowners down there after they post. So we're going to need you to send a picture to the gotfacebookpics at gmail.com. It's going to be two photos. It's going to be the photo where they posted, and it's going to be the photo showing where they tagged 20 people. And someone did that today. I'm, I want to say it was Jamie and Caroline. Good job. They tag 20 homeowners today in theirs. And so that's what we want you to do. Just do that 14 times. You automatically win the camping set, which is a really, really awesome deal. There's another photo of it right there. Okay. Now, you know, we'd rather be on fast start appointments because if you're like me, I feel like I can sell better if I've got a new recruit with me and I'm showing their mom and dad, right? So uh, make sure that when you go on your demos this month, you recruit people. And so during May, we have a special contest up exclusively for May where you're going to get to pick something and every one of these items, it's legal to use them, right? It is legal to go kayaking. It is actually legal now to grill out in your, uh, in your own yard, right? You can cut your own grass and blow off your own driveway and you can get on the internet. Now it is legal. It opened back up. You can use the internet now and you can use a Yeti cooler to keep your drinks cool. You can uh, put a 65 inch TV up as long as it's on your own wall, right? And it doesn't take more than 10 people to do it. And the Facebook portal 
they're actually, they're legal to use right now, right? At least for a few weeks, all right? So that's where you can uh, talk to family members and all that. Now I'm using a set of the um, AirPods uh, made by the Apple company. I don't know if you've ever heard of them, but it's a new company. Uh, it's, they've got a logo of an Apple, right? So they're pretty cool. They have really good quality and uh, they come with their own little um, charging thingy. The little thing they go in charges them, right? So it's pretty awesome. Get one new recruit and you automatically gonna win this. The only little rule is the recruit's gotta sell one, right? Well, if your recruit don't sell one, uh, we don't want them anyway, right? So, but no, they're gonna all sell. Everybody sells during the fast start. I uh, can't think of hardly anybody didn't sell one on their fast start. Uh, Ethan, you had one that didn't, but she did sell one, right? So we're so proud of her. She's gonna be a rock star in Rainbow, right? So I'm gonna show you some of the gifts. I should have just been clicking this the whole time. Um, but check that out right there. That's a grill, that's a Yeti. And that right there is a blank screen. There's those things I'm using. There's those portals. There's that video we're gonna skip. So there's a 65 inch TV and there is a laptop, right? So as we talked about, some of the people have lost their free rainbow on the equity program because of the, the coronavirus. They didn't get out there and get finished or they won it and they didn't sell it within the 60 days, right? So we kind of have a second chance program going on. So sell two rainbows during the month of May and you will win a rainbow. So you will win a rainbow without a power nozzle. And as it says there, you uh, basically, when you go sell that rainbow, you're gonna sell your rainbow with our power nozzle because you didn't win a power nozzle, but you're gonna need a power nozzle. So you're gonna sell our rainbow with your, or our, our power nozzle, excuse me, with your rainbow. And since you're gonna sell it for $26.98, you're gonna get 2,200 of that and we're gonna keep the rest of it to pay us for our power nozzle that you didn't win, right? So that's kind of how that works. So the way I look at this is if you make the two sales, then you go sell the free rainbow. Between those three sales, you've made enough money to pay off your rainbow, okay? Now let's read the rules that says down at the bottom, you're eligible for this contest only if you lost your free rainbow on the 21 demo program or you are currently still on your equity program. So there are people that are on it. I can think of a couple people that had only done like eight or nine demos, but their time is like up like at the end of this week, all right? So they're still in this, even though they did not yet lose it technically, but honestly, there's no way they can win it. So you're still on this, right? So listen, guys, you need to just sell two rainbows. That's easy to do. We've got people that have already sold five this month and today's just the fifth day. So uh, make sure you get on it. Remember this contest is going on, right? So here's something, I don't know how much everybody understood this last week. So I wanna try to make sure I, I explain it, right? So the manufacturer has a little deal where they're gonna give away bunches and bunches of rainbows. So they're gonna um, give away a free rainbow a commission. I'm sorry, it's gonna be a super commission. I'm saying free rainbows. It's a super commission. And that means you're gonna get a $2,000 commission on a sale. All you have to do is sell 10 rainbows and you're guaranteed a super commission on your next sale. If you do 15 or more, you're guaranteed actually two super commissions. Now here's a rule breaker. I'm not gonna require that you sell two in between those bonus sales. So they can be back to back $2,000 commissions in two consecutive sales. If you sell 20 sales, Margo, go ahead and do it again and get three super commissions during the month of May, right? So uh, now you do see there's a category of five to nine. So let me tell you how that's gonna work. So everybody who sells five or more, but doesn't quite get to 10, uh, you'll be in that category. Unfortunately, Rex is only gonna give away 75 rainbows to that group of people. So they're gonna obviously give the uh, rainbows to the people who sold the most out of those people. So I would honestly say everyone that sells nine should get a rainbow. Everyone that sells eight may or may not because what they're gonna do, they're gonna certainly give away a rainbow to everyone with nine sales. And let's say that's 50. So that's gonna leave 25 more so then they go down to everybody that sold eight. Well, there may be a hundred people in the U.S. that have sold eight. 
So what they'll do is they'll give 25 of those people a free rainbow. And basically what they'll do, they'll break that kind of tie or they'll determine which 25 get the rainbow by the number of demos that were done by those people. And then if there's ties there, then they ain't going to go to who had the most recruits. So there's going to be some tiebreaker uh, 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 rules in there. So anyway, to be safe, just go ahead and sell 10 or more and get you a super commission, right? That recruiting part, everybody with two recruits that sell a total of two. So as long as you recruit two people in May, and if just one of them sells two and the other one doesn't even make a sale, that's fine. They're going to give away 20 free rainbows in that category too. And again, they're going to have to break those ties by how, how many that group sold during the month of May. And then if you have three recruits and your, and your little group of three recruits sell at least three, again, 20 more rainbows given away there too. It may be confusing. If you have questions about it, feel free to call me when we're done. So that's going on during May and that is Rex Air and we thank Rex Air for that. They're spending a ton of money uh, to get uh, the rainbow economy going again, so to speak. They're, they're putting money in a stimulus package for, for all of us, okay? So that's the kind of company we work for, right? So remember this, this weekend is Mother's Day. Don't forget that on Sunday, so get your mom something. Uh, Ryan's saying he's, uh, he's got something for his mom. I can't believe what he's buying her. It's incredible. He's spending a ton of money on his mom. Uh, so it is Mother's Day on Sunday. And you will get to uh, get a $100 bonus on all your sales Saturday and Sunday. So that is both days, even though Mother's Day is only Sunday. We are giving the bonuses both Saturday and Sunday. And it does not matter about the credit. It can be a 60% credit. And instead of making only 100, you would make 200 that, that weekend, right? Plus, as an extra incentive for the customer, they do get two attachments with the purchase for buying this weekend. Now, I wanna point out to everybody, we have like 11 recruits going out this weekend on their fast start. Some of you guys will probably be on the fast start with those people. I want you to read the very last line on that contest. Fast start sales do not count for this special. So please don't go on a fast start appointment this weekend and tell the customer that they get two accessories for buying this weekend. And please don't mislead your recruit into thinking they get a $100 bonus. None of that uh, applies to the fast start people. Here's why. I'm having to give them a free rainbow if they make four sales. That already takes most, if not almost all of the profit. That's why we can't always do things like this on top of the fast start, okay? I hope everybody understands that. But please keep that in mind. If there is somebody that almost bought and you think I could call them back and get them to buy this weekend, if I told them they're going to get two accessories, it can be the shampoo and the mop or whatever. Uh, and and, um, and by the way, the mini jet is not in the photo, but I would include the mini jet, the one for shampoo and furniture. Plus, remember, you guys get a $100 bonus, right? So here's what I wanted to do real quick. I wanted to go over something that hit me this morning. We had a dealer who did a demo and the people had no carpet, right? And I just felt like um, maybe this dealer um, was maybe a little bit, uh, oh, how do I say? Anyway, I don't think that the customer wanted the rainbow that badly this morning, and it was because they had no carpet, right? So I thought, well, you know, we haven't done that in a while, and I thought, well, I'll, I'll kind of go through that with you. So I think doing a demo where they have absolutely no carpet at all is a mindset, okay? So let me, um, what time is it? All right, let me do this. Um, actually, I hate taking shortcuts, but I need to take a shortcut on this. I'm not going to do it all right. So let me just talk to you real quick about, about demos with no carpet. All right, so here's what I found in my 31 years in Rainbow. Shannon, when I first got in Rainbow in 1989 and through the early 90s and all the way up to probably the 2000s, most homes that I showed the Rainbow in had carpeting. They had linoleum or hardwood only in the kitchen or tile, but they had, we had mainly wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. So I, in my mind, when I went in a home and they had no carpet, 
Ethan, I just really got just blown, confused. My mind was blown and I just, I really didn't know what to do, right? So fast forward to today, no one has carpet, right? So today, I think if we go in and they have wall-to-wall -wall carpet, your mind might be blown. Like, oh my God, what do I do? These folks have carpet throughout the entire house, right? So we've got to get uh, in our mind uh, a, a little bit, I think we could do a better job with, with no carpet, right? So let me just say a couple of things. There's so many times we will talk with a dealer, right? So when you get done with the demo, Brianna, you call the rainbow office, right? And we, we thank the customer and, and, you know, we try to close the sale and all of that, right? What, what I found is uh, there's been many a times that people have done demos where the people had no carpet and they started the demo at five o'clock and by 545, they're calling the rainbow office. That's a 45 minute demonstration. So guess what they say when I speak to them on the phone, the customers, we love it, but we just can't afford it. Or we really like it. We want to get one, but you know, now's a bad time. Or, you know, if we had more carpet, you know, we'd love to have it, but no more carpet than we got. to can't justify spending that much money. So, you know, you can't do a demo in 45 minutes. I don't care if they have all carpet. Listen, you, you know, please, I hope you understand that I'm only trying to help here when I say these things. It takes 45 minutes to get your list of names. It takes 45 minutes to get your list of names and get green lights. You can't do the whole thing in 45 minutes. You just can't be done, right? So if you're doing a 45 minute or an hour long demonstration, I just want you to know you've, you've shortcut it. There, those people don't really want the rainbow because they don't see the need for it. You got to remember, there's a psychological thing about they have to see the need for the rainbow. Selling is a couple of different things. I mean, number one, it's an emotional thing. Like people got to get emotional when they buy the rainbow. They emotionally involved. So they have to be like excited emotionally. You know, what does that is, is like showing them the dirt, um, you know, the smells, uh, blowing the air at them and waking them up, you know, those things are emotionally uh, pretty cool to a customer, right? Also, but there's got to be a lot of, uh, there's got to be some, some factual, some common sense. And I think that's where you got to show them how the rainbow makes sense, where it's, it's going to save their, their hardwood. It's going gonna, it's gonna to save the life of their appliances. It's going to save them money. And then again, you got to show them the economics of it. Again, where the rainbow is a good investment, right? So which one of those is most important? You know, the answer is all of them. So, but when we get in a home and they have all hardwood, we are bad to try to shortcut the demo because we don't really know what to do. So let me just walk you through a couple of things that I learned many, many years ago when you go in if they have all, all, uh, all hardwood. So let me say this. I'm going to start with the first part of the demo where we, you know, we've already got our names. We've already got our green lights. Because you guys understand that should never change. It doesn't matter if they have hardwood, carpet, or dirt floors. We're going to get our names, we're going to get our green lights, and we're going to do all that the same every demo, right? I'm talking about when we finally get into the, uh, the living room, we're ready to do the demo. So, you know, in a, in a normal demo, you're going to go through these pages and you're going to show them the problem in their home. And when you get over here to Let's See What Some House Does, or what may be in household dust particles, we teach you to take our demo light out, right? And we teach you to rate that light, okay? Well, guess what you're not able to do when they don't have carpet? You're not able to, to rate that light on that floor, right? So what I want to teach you to do is what to do when they have all hardwood and they don't have any area rugs. Now, let me just back up a second. So there's a lot of times, guys, I'll go on a demo and they have all hardwood, but they're in the kitchen calling and I'm kind of setting up, trying to get my, my mind right, and trying to look around. What is it that I need to really focus on in this house? Well, I can clean that deer head. I can do those mini blinds over there. Oh my gosh, this glass table would be awesome. Let me clean this glass coffee table. Um, you know, I'm scoping out things I can clean. Well, one thing I want to always look for is a, is a doormat at, at the door, right? Usually most people do have something to wipe your feet on when you walk outside, particularly like outside when it's raining right now. If you walk in with wet feet on hardwoods, a lot of times it is slick. 
So we'll have something to dry our feet on at the door. It's called a doormat. It normally says welcome. It even might say the Johnson family on it, right? So I want to grab that and I want to put it right here in front of me. That way it's, it's something for me to rake, right? My light on. So if you can get lucky enough and they do have that area rug, just say, hey guys, I'm going to move your area rug over here because that way I can show you a little something right here and, and put two, I don't want to scratch your floor. So I want to just put the mat right here. And they're like, oh, okay, great. You know, so, or you can just always say, anytime you want to do anything, say, it'll make my demo go quicker. Do you mind if I do this? Can I move this coffee table? Can we slide this rug over here? Hey, to make my demo go quicker, would you mind grabbing me some water? If you just say it's going to make my demo go quicker, they're going to be like, yes, whatever you need to do, right? If it's going to make your demo go quicker, yes, do it, right? So, anyway, um, so get the area. But if they don't have a little mat there that you can use, we always teach to take the light and just hit the couch, right? Hit the cushion on the couch and shine the light. You can hit the light to the cushion, right? But if they have leather furniture and hardwood, then take the light. And I'm just going to pretend because you guys can't see when I go all the way down here because of my computer. It's a long story. So, but you just, you rake the light close to the floor, but don't touch the floor. If you just do this, just move the, rake the light back and forth and then shine it. You're going to see all kinds of stuff and you can even flick your light and you'll see all this stuff underneath it here, right? So you create a draft is what you're doing off the floor by just doing this, right? Do you know that, Jenna, that most people who have carpet, um, the carpet will hold the dust down. But people who have hardwoods, it's floating freely more, more freely because there's nothing to hold it down, right? I don't know if that makes sense. And so sometimes I go in people's homes and I see, see dust bunnies up against the wall where they have all hardwoods because when you walk, you just kind of blows it off to the side and you have this kind of like path uh, right in the center and then all of these dust bunnies are off to the sides. And so uh, anyway, another thing that we teach that you do, and, and maybe you can see it over here, but you should take this light, guys, on hardwood, if you would just shine the light sideways. See how I've got the light, I'm not shining it down, I'm shining it across, and lay the bell of the light, lay the bell down onto the floor, and then turn it on, and then go that way, and guess what you can see? You can see everything showing up. Have you guys ever uh, got down eye level with your kitchen cabinets, or kitchen countertop? You can see all the crumbs on it, you know what I'm talking about? but you can't necessarily see it when you're standing up, but you get down eye level with the countertop, you can see all the crumbs, right? It's the same thing by shining that light across the floor like that. Again, touch the bell to the floor and then shine it. You can see all the stuff showing up. It's pretty amazing, right? And you should do that tonight. You should go to your car when you get done with this meeting. You should get your demo light and bring it in your own home, plug it up and shine it across your floor. And you're gonna be like, oh my God, I go into home and sell rainbows, but look at my house, it's filthy, right? So you got to use your rainbow more, I guess. But make sure that just instead of uh, raking the light on the floor, that you're uh, just, you know, creating a draft or either hit the cap. So that's what you're going to do right here. Now, when we get over here, we're going to do our normal air wash where we show them how to rainbow cleans the air, right? So nothing should change there at all, right? So did you guys know that the reason a lot of people um, have all hardwood or linoleum is because guess what their doctor told them to do? take it all up, right? Because they have allergies. So Margie, you know, years ago, the only homes I ever went in that had all hardwood was the homes that they had allergies and her doctor had told them to take it up, right? So make sure that you know that they're automatically good candidates. Ryan, customer. And so does that make sense? Anyway, hey, Francesca. All right, cool. So we're going to get over here and we're going to go over to the fragrances. So we do that like normal right? There's nothing should change with our air wash and our fragrances, except we don't literally contact the floor with the light maybe, right? You want to show them how to rainbow certified by the Asthma and Allergy Foundation and all that, and then you go and get over here and to the vat kill page, all right? Use your traditional tools and methods to eliminate house dust are not effective, and I always say, guys, let me ask you this, Whitney, do you use a, uh, a vacuum cleaner? And she says, well, yeah, what else do you use to clean your house? Do you use a broom? Well, I use a Swiffer mop. Okay. Uh, do you use a feather duster or a dust cloth? And whatever she says, I say, would you do me a favor, Bill? Would you run and grab the vacuum cleaner, all right? And Whitney, would you mind running in the kitchen and or wherever you keep it and get your Swiffer mop, your broom, 
and your feather duster, if you don't mind, just real quick. Okay, cool. And I got to get something over here while you do that. So if I, I want to get them to go get all of their stuff, they clean their house with, right? I want to get them their vacuum cleaner, their broom, their Swiffer, their dust cloth, their feather duster, what have you. I want to get it all in this room. So you got to think about this, Ethan. Let's take a little bit of a step back. We, we call this a vac kill. So we go in the home and we want to kill the idea of their vacuum cleaner. So they'll want to buy our vacuum, right? But, but we really should kill their Swiffer. We should kill their broom. We should kill uh, all their dusting tools. Because what does the rainbow replace? All of that. If you think about it, doesn't it? It replaces all of that. So that's why when we go into home and they have all hardwood, we're looking to do more than we would typically do when I go if they have all carpet, all right? So we're looking for stuff to clean. And yes, we're gonna do more with the attachments. And believe it or not, we're gonna go to the mattress and we're gonna clean that customer's mattress tonight. You know why I'm gonna have to do that, Catherine? Because they ain't got carpet, right? I'm looking for stuff to clean tonight. Like this is a little bit more of a challenge tonight, right? But I'm gonna tell you, Candace, when I leave that house and I got an empty back box in the back of my car, you know how proud I am of myself? I saw one tonight, they have no carpet at all, right? So it's amazing. So anyway, so we get to the vac kill page. Sometimes, Irma, believe it or not, they don't even have a vacuum cleaner. I've went in many homes, they don't even have a vacuum cleaner. Somebody did that today, actually. They had no vacuum cleaner at all, all right? So obviously you can't do this part of the demo if they don't have a vacuum. But what I would do, it's a good idea, I think you should walk them through and tell them what you would show them if they had a, uh, a vacuum. So here's the deal, Jamie. Sometimes you go in a home and they have no vacuum cleaner and they love the rainbow, but then they're thinking to themselves, but why would I buy that? If I, you've convinced me I should be vacuuming, not using my broom or my Swiffer, but there's a lot cheaper vacuum cleaners on the market than 26. I don't understand why I would need to buy. I'm just going to go to Walmart and look at buying one that's cheaper, right? No, what you got to do is you got to kill the idea of a bag or filter vacuum cleaner during your demo, though they might not actually own a vacuum cleaner, right? So what I want to do right here is I would say, guys, you just got to trust me and believe me on this. But if you had a vacuum cleaner, here's what I would actually do. I would actually put your vacuum cleaner up on top of the box. And what I actually do, Ethan, is I take my light and I shine it on the exhaust of your vacuum, right where the air blows back out, right? And I will actually, you would not believe the amount of dust that blows right back out of all vacuum cleaners. Do you know they say that one of the best vacuum cleaners on the market is the Sears Kenmore, filters more of the dirt and dust and doesn't blow near as much as most of the other vacuum cleaners. And do you know that it's rated at a, a low 60% of the fine dirt and dust particles stay inside the machine. All, over 35% of it blows right back out. A third of it blows right back out into the air, right? So that's what I would have shown you if you guys had a vacuum cleaner today. I understand you don't. But so that's what I do if they don't have a vacuum in place of the vac kills. That makes sense? Walk them through and show them. The next thing I want to do, Ryan. Hey, we don't have a water bowl, do we? I didn't think of that. Y'all hold on, let me get the water bowl, guys. All right, cool. So we got that, we got a water bowl now. So you gotta have a water bowl. If your rainbow doesn't have a water bowl, you probably need to reschedule that demo, right? So, but if they if they have a vacuum cleaner, you want to go through and show them their machine pollutes, right? Does that make sense? The next thing we would typically do after the, the vac kill, y'all may not even know what a vac kill is. The vac kill is the part where you hold a light on their vac cleaner, it blows the dust out. That's called a vac kill. If you ever hear Jay, Ryan, Michael say, did you do the vac kill? What we mean is, did you get their vac cleaner out of the closet and show them that it pollutes more than it cleans? I don't know, to me that's a, like, you gotta do that, right? And I know that I've sent some, uh, I don't wanna talk about anybody. I send people on demos with new new recruits and or experienced trainers supposedly, and they don't even do the vac kill when they train you. And I know, but what are you gonna do? I mean, I don't know, you know, it's all I got, send with you. I'm sorry if I sent somebody with you that don't do the vac kill, all right? Um, 
But anyway, they're doing it, when, in my opinion, they could be doing a better job. So the next thing you want to do is the 52 stroke, right? This is where you have them back in 52 times with their old machine. And then you put the black cloths on the visualizer, right? Put the two cloths right here. And then you show them what their machine left behind. Yes? Okay. So guess what we're going to do if they don't have um, – if they don't have a vacuum and they don't have any rugs. Well, first of all, if they have uh, no vacuum and no rugs, we're going to literally have them take their Swiffer. I'm going to have them take their broom and I'm going to have them clean an area. Now it's not going to be a, a streak, Ethan, like we would on the 52 stroke. I'm going to have them clean an area, right? Cause I'm going to need more area here. So I have them clean this area. Maybe can I get you guys to sweep most of this room real quick for me? Right? So have them do that. While they're doing that, what I would recommend you doing actually is you're getting your broom out. And by the way, in my opinion, this is not a broom. This is the uh, this is for carpet and mattresses. I don't know if you guys agree with that. I, I don't really. That's just my opinion. Everybody's got an opinion. I think you should use the broom attachment on the floors. Okay, it's just my opinion. All right. So I think you should use this. I think you should be getting this ready while they're actually uh, sweeping their, their, their room you're in there. We're getting this hooked up, right? And I want to make sure the dirt doesn't go where, everybody? The dirt cannot go into the what? The water. water. What's the problem if it goes into water. the water? Well, I'm going to be honest. It takes a lot of water, a lot of water, a lot of dirt to make that water look bad. I mean a lot of dirt. You gotta be in a really dirty house for that to look bad, right? So I'm not gonna let that dirt go in that water, right? I'm actually gonna catch the dirt right here on a cloth. So you can just take a cloth, a long cloth, and you can just literally tuck it in right here. That'll work. Literally tuck it in right here, and then put your piece on, and now we're gonna have them sweep, right? So what we want to do, we just don't want the dirt to go in the water. When we get done, Ethan, because we just swept that, I'm going to show them all the dirt that their broom or their Swiffer left behind. Right? Does that make sense? So it's the same thing as a 52 stroke. And I ask them committing questions. You know, we, we're big on committing questions. You know, we, we teach you to use their first names. I'm even using you guys as first names. I mean, and I'm, 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 you know, miles from you, right? You have to use people's names or they'll, they'll daydream during your, your demo or they'll text or be on Facebook, right? So um, you definitely want to be using their names. But ask committing questions. Say, let me ask you guys a question, Catherine. I'm just not trying to be smart, but do you feel like you just wasted your time cleaning this area with your broom or your Swiffer? I mean, really, look at the dirt. But see, here's the problem with your floor. Your floor is not flat. Your floor's got grooves. Your floor's got uh, between the planks of the wood. You've got your crevices, right? Some of them are very deep. And look at all the dirt that you've just been sweeping into those cracks, right? And it's a stupid question, but Jamie and Carolyn, would y'all want to put this down into cracks or would you want to get it out of your home? Which one? You'd rather exactly. get it out, wouldn't you? Okay. Now, those yeah. are good committing questions that you want to ask. You feel like you waste your time. You know, do you guys want to be putting it down in the cracks or would you rather get rid of it? You'd rather get rid of it, wouldn't you? Okay, cool. And remember to smile at them each time you ask a question like that, but lay the dirt out. Now, remember what we're trying to do too, for those of you that can't, um, don't remember, we're trying to pull 30 black cloths like you can see right over here, right? At the end of my demo, I want to have at least 30 black cloths. That's my evidence, right? If you don't pull enough dirt, y'all, they're going to tell you, you did a good job and we're going to get one later. If you get tired of hearing that crap, maybe you'll do a better demo, right? Maybe you'll get committing questions. Maybe you'll use their first names. I'm telling you, maybe you'll take longer than 45 minutes to do your demo. I got so tired of hearing people saying they were going to call me back. I mean, and I believed them. I thought people would actually call me back, but they didn't call back. Right. It, well, you know, they didn't and, uh, and they still don't. Nothing's changed, right? Except maybe we believe it, right? So pull dirt there behind their machine if they if you have to use the broom, right? Behind their broom, I'm sorry, all right? So take the dirt, lay it over here with your evidence, right? Now, the next thing that you would typically do during a demo, I don't know if everybody knows for sure, 
then the next thing you would typically do is you do vac kill, then you do 52 stroke, and then the next thing you want to do is what's called the mini vac. Okay, now I'm a fan of the mini vac, right? I believe in the mini vac. I believe the mini vac has to be done every demo. If you don't understand what the mini vac is, you need to go to our YouTube channel. Ryan sent you guys a link to it. You can watch the demos on the mini vac and learn to do that. But basically, what the mini vac shows them is that why they don't need to go out and buy another vacuum cleaner that uses a bag or filter or why their vacuum cleaner they're currently using leaving all this dirt, right? It's because it has no airflow. You've got to learn to explain to them the Rainbow's not a regular vacuum cleaner. They can't go to the store and buy one that works like this. This machine uses water. Water doesn't get clogged up. When you're trying to pull air through a solid, it gets clogged. But when you're pulling air through a liquid, it maintains 100% air movement all the time and it is air movement that lifts the dirt up out of the floor. You gotta make sure you do a good job with the harmonica, you know what I'm talking about, I hope, all right? So we have videos on our uh, YouTube channel, so please watch that. But now's where I'm gonna do my mini vac, regardless of whether they have a vacuum cleaner or not, I don't want them to go and, uh, and say I'm gonna buy a regular vacuum cleaner. I, you've convinced me I should be vacuuming and not sweeping, but I'm gonna go buy a $200 vacuum cleaner, not a $2,600 vacuum, right? So make sure you do that. So after you've done a mini vac, the next thing we teach you to do is show all the attachments. Okay, so when it gets to the attachments, you have to do a good job with the attachments, right? So the first attachment that we always show is the one for the furniture, right? So we always teach you to explain to them why it has this little boot on it right here, okay? And why, what, you know, what the, what the purpose of it is. So, so I ask them, I say, guys, think about this. If you went uptown and you bought a vacuum cleaner, because I know y'all don't have one, but if you went and bought a vacuum cleaner, first of all, we know it's going to clog up in 15 minutes, like I just showed you, and lose its airflow there. But it's going to come with an attachment like this, Ethan. And here's the problem, and I know you guys have used a vacuum cleaner, and you get out here to start vacuuming, and you put it on your couch, and it kind of sticks right? So when it sticks, guess what it can't get anymore, Dorothy? It can't get any airflow, right? And we said a while ago, when we used that little clear tube, remember, you have to have airflow, right? So they thought of everything with the rainbow. So our upholstery uh, tool, if you check it out here, has this little boot that slides on. And if you look, it's got grooves. And what are those grooves for, Irma? And she'll say airflow, right? And I say, exactly, guys, you got to have airflow, right? So let's do this. Let's clean that couch cushion right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a black cloth. I'm going to put it right here on the end, right? Or two cloths. You can even use two here. It's actually better. And then let's go vacuum. Let's vacuum that couch, right? So we're going to vacuum that couch cushion, right? I like to do the one they were sitting on, right? So I'm going to vacuum the couch cushion. I'm going to turn it off. And this is going to be really, really dirty, right? And I'm going to say, look at that. And they're going to be like, oh, my gosh, I'm so embarrassed, right? And I say, well, guys, listen. I get I, So many times people ask me, how did all this get up there in my couch? <clears throat> Do you remember a while ago, Dorothy, uh, when you guys were using your Swiffer and you were using your broom, right? I don't know if you guys have ever heard the old saying, sweeping up a, I don't know if anybody can complete that, but sweeping up a storm, right? It's an old saying. Have you ever been in a restaurant eating and they're sweeping around you and you're thinking they're sweeping and there's all this dust in there landing on my food, right? So see, can, can you see from the looks of this when you guys sweep and where's it all landing, Dorothy? And they'll say, well, on my couch, exactly, right? Then I take this dirt, well, check this out. I'll lay this in a chair. I say, hop up just a second, Bill. And I'll lay the dirty cloth right in his chair and I'll say, have a seat. And he'll say, I'm not sitting on that dirt because it, see, it's a, a dirty black cloth. And I lay it in his chair and I say, have a seat. And he says, I'm not sitting on that. And I say, well, let me ask you a question, Caroline. I'm not trying to be smart, but is it the dirt or is it the black cloth that bothers you? And he'll say, well, of course it's the dirt. I say, exactly. I say the dirt was there before, wasn't it, Bill? But you couldn't see it, right? But now that you know it's there, in all honesty, Jenna, are you like me and my wife? You wouldn't want to leave it there now that you know it's there, right? And how you gonna get that out, Ethan, with suction or airflow? And he's gonna say, hopefully airflow. And I say, well, Dorothy, can you have airflow with a bag vacuum? 
or a filter back. You can't for about 15 minutes, right? Awesome. So I'm going to lay that over here again. We're pulling dirt, right? So we're going to put this back on. What else are we going to clean with this? Well, maybe do a different chair. Do his recliner, right? What else we do with this? How about those curtains, those drapes over there, right? So when we do the drapes, remember, every time you clean something, though, I need you to change the cloth. Um, we're, we need to pull 30. Listen, I'm not going to lie to you. If you don't pull 30 cloths and they have no carpet, you ain't selling a rainbow, all right? If you don't pull 30 cloths and they don't have carpet, particularly if they don't have a vacuum cleaner, you ain't selling a rainbow. You're packing it up, you're taking it home, and that's the way it's going to be. And you're going to probably say, man, I hate it when they don't have carpet. I would hate it too, right? You've got, if I wasn't selling, you know, there's people here that think they can't sell if the people are old. There's people that say, I can't show, I've never sold a single lady. There's people say, I never sell one when I'm in a, a $500,000 home. And, you know, get me in a mobile home, I can sell one. You know, everybody's got this, these things in our mind. You know, I can't sell one on a Tuesday. I never have sold one down in Spartanburg. It's that whole area down there. I can't sell one in Spartanburg, but I've sold tons of them in Gaffney. You know, we have all these things in our mind, right? Well, listen, all, none of that's true right? You know, if you're superstitious, ah, yeah, there's nothing to that either, right? I hate to tell you that, right? It's like my kids saying, Daddy, I think there's a ghost in that room. Well, there's no such thing as ghost. I'm sorry, right? It's just a fact. It's just not. It's not they're not real, right? Uh, so believe it or not, it's just, it's just not real, right? So um, there's the Holy Ghost, right? But there's just, you know, there's no ghost. So you got to show, but so I'm going to pull dirt here. I'm going to back in the curtains, and I'm going to show the dirt, and I'm going to say, Candace, listen, we don't walk in our curtains. You know how all this dirt got up there on them curtains? When you did what? Every time you used what? And I'll point to her broom or her Swiffer. Every time you do what, Candace? And I make them say, every time I sweep, exactly, right? All we're doing here, Ethan, is we're letting, we're soft selling. We're not selling it, we're soft selling. We're letting them sell themselves right? We're not going in there and telling them a bunch of stuff. We're going in there and they're telling us a bunch of stuff, right? You got to get this different in your mind. This isn't a demonstration where we go talk at people. We go in there and we have a conversation with the customer, but we want, we leave the conversation. That is true. We lead them into saying the things that we want them to say, right? So we're going to pull dirt from that curtain and we're going to lay it over here, right? So we're gonna pull dirt, we're gonna pull five or six cloths just with the upholstery brush, right? We're gonna go from the upholstery brush to the dusting brush, all right? Now, I ask them, I say, if you went up and bought a vacuum cleaner at the store, they all come with a dusting tool, right? All right? Even the uprights come with the dusting tool. So think about this. The whole idea of, Catherine, of this tool is you wanna vacuum the dust off your TV screen, right? Or, or off of this glass table, right? But Margo, if you think about it, when we use a dusting brush, what's blowing out the other end of our vacuum? Dust, right? Okay, so it kind of makes that crazy to even have a tool like this with a regular vacuum, right? See, that would be if I was able to show them the dust blowing out of their vacuum, right? So anyway, if they don't have a vacuum and they use a, a dust, uh, sorry, a feather duster or a dust rag, I don't know if you got whatever you use, They've even, Swiffer's got even got the little, the little Swiffer duster now. You seen those little suckers, right? So here's the deal. What I want to do is I want to take my demo light out and I want to take their feather duster or their little Swiffer duster and I just want to hit it to my light. You know what's going to fall out of that duster? Tons of dust, right? What am I going to do with their dust rag? I'm going to hit it right here on, the edge, on my light. You know what's going to fall out of their, uh, their dust rag? tons of dust, right? And I just ask them, I say, when you're over here dusting, what are you really doing? You're moving it from the countertop back down to the floor till you sweep again, and then you're kicking it back up there, back up onto the countertop again, and then you dust it off again off your, your furniture, and then back on the floor, and then the next week you sweep again, it's back up on the furniture. Does any of that make any sense? You just got to paint a picture for them, right? You got to do more because these people have all hardwoods and we know, man, it's a challenge if they have all hardwoods, but in no way, shape or form should this take 45 minutes. It's taken me 45 minutes to explain to you what to do, not to do it, right? 
you got to do a full value building demonstration, right? So we're going to pull dirt with this tool. We're going to put our black cloth right here on the end, right? We're going to tuck a black cloth in. All I'm doing is tucking it in there. If you guys can't see it, just tuck a black cloth in the end of the pipe. Just tuck it down in, make it about, about an inch deep or about a knuckle deep. Then put any tool on it you want to use, right? Put the duster on. And now we want to go vacuum the lampshade. So we want to have her vacuum the lampshade. Have the customer use it. Take the dirt. Show her the dirt. Ask her a question, Brianna. How did all that dirt get up there on that lampshade when you, when you did what? And I point to their broom or their Swiffer when you did what? Or if they have a vacuum cleaner, I say, well, how did it blow? How did it get up there? It blew out of what? And I make them say, out of my shark, out of my Bissell, out of my Sears Kenmore, out of my Dyson, right? So we want to keep killing the, the idea of what they clean with. Anyway, so we're, what can we do with that tool? I know we can't find it. What can we do with this tool? Well, we can certainly do mini blinds. We can certainly do uh, lampshades. We can certainly do TV screens, right? Here's something we always need to do. We live in a, in a hunting um, area of the world. How about that, right? When deer season, listen, I can remember for, for years and years when deer season so, opens up, Ethan, man, I ain't getting the husband home. I, he's too busy hunting, right? I mean, literally, like it's like almost like um, Christmas. It's like you can't get them at home. The husband's gone, right? So there's usually deer heads around in people's homes. So I want to, to vacuum the deer head. I'm talking like the back. Like if you were petting a deer, you know, we tend to pet his neck. That's where all the dirt is on the deer head that's mounted on the wall. Take this and vacuum that. It will be incredible, the dirt you get, right? How about along the tops of the wood molding on the floor? Everywhere, how about the, the, the uh, brick fireplace? Do you know the tops of those bricks are set in full of dust? The tops of each brick is set in full of dust. You can just take that dust and brush and just go along the top of the brick and you're just gonna get so much dust. And again, you just wanna say guys, every time you swept, this stuff's just getting kicked up, right? So again, you're killing that in. So when you're done with that, the next thing we wanna show is the corner crack and crevice tool. The corner crack, and crevice tool, all right? So the corner crack and crevice tool is super important because I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's actually notched. Can you see that? It's notched two ways, not just one way, it's actually notched both ways. So there's no way that this tool can literally stick to anything. It's always gonna get airflow, right? Which we know is what cleans. And I'll point that out to them. Then I'm gonna put a, I'll do this a little different. I use my little visualizer here. Two cloths, put this on and this, and now I'm gonna go along the baseboard, right? I'm gonna go along the baseboard and I'm gonna show them all the stuff that's been kicked against the baseboard when they walk around in their home. And this is gonna be just awful, right? So you're again, you're pulling dirt and then you explain to them the reason that we have so much against the baseboard is because when you sweep or when it's just getting kicked over there, right? So we're definitely gonna show the main three attachments, right? All three of these, and you can either put them on the machine or you can put them back in the little box, right? But here's, again, the most important attachment to me is the broom head, all right? So I'm gonna use the visualizer here at the top. I'm gonna put two cloths in here. I've got one pipe and then I got the broom, right? I'll check this out. If you'll notice that the, uh, if you'll notice that it is actually notched. Can you see the bristles are notched? Can you see the notches in the bristle there? So why are the, the bristles notched, guys? For airflow, right? You should, your customers should be able to answer that when you ask them that. Because at this point, if they should understand airflow. So we're going to put two cloths in here, Ethan, and we're going to go and we're going to vacuum. And then when that gets dirty, because I'm watching as she's vacuuming, because she's vacuuming, right? I'm behind the rainbow. I'm pushing the machine along behind her on the floor. So she never has to touch the rainbow. I'm pushing it along behind her, right? So I'm watching this visualizer, and I'm watching it get dirty. And I'm going to change the cloths, and I'm going to put two more cloths in, and she's going to keep vacuuming. We're going to go to the kitchen, and we're going to vacuum, right? 
We're gonna clean the entire floor if we can with this broom right here. And we're gonna pull like 10 to 20 cloths because we're pulling two at a time. Did you guys know that? Put two long cloths in here every time and then back it, change it. Put two more cloths, right? Listen, what we gotta do is we gotta show them the need for this product. Do you know why people don't call the office Eddie wanting to buy a rainbow? Let me tell you, because they don't think they need it. When I go to Lowe's Hardware or Home Depot, it's because something's broke, something's leaking, something's torn up, and I need to buy something to fix it, okay? I'm not there to renovate my home, right? I'm there to fix something. Most people walk in there and say, where's the plumbing stuff? Uh, okay, where's the gutter stuff? I got a leaking gutter. Uh, I need to find a, the electrical department. Uh, I've got a bad switch or I've got a bad outlet or, or I need to find the fuses. Okay, you're looking for something because something at your house is broke. Well, guess what's not broke in their mind? Their vacuum cleaner. Guess what they don't have a pro Their house is clean. All of that is the reason they don't call us and say, bring me a rainbow. My house is filthy. No, they don't know their house is filthy. They don't call us and say, bring me a rainbow. My vacuum cleaner spitting dirt and dust back out and leaving the dirt down in the floor. No, they don't know any of that. See, that's what our job is, is to come to their home and to show them a problem they didn't know existed and then show them the solution is right here, the rainbow, and we even have a monthly payment plan on it. Let me show you how that works, right? So it's the same thing to me as somebody accidentally, the termite guy accidentally go into your house instead of the person's house who called him, maybe it was your neighbor, and he, while he's there, he inspects the corner of your house, finds termite damage, comes, rings the doorbell, and shows you the termite damage, and you just now found out in a five minute window of your life that you need to buy some protection, that you have termite damage, right? That this is going to cost you thousands of dollars, and you just found out all of a sudden, right? Most of us wouldn't say, well, I'm not worried about it. Just don't worry about it. I'm not, I'm not gonna do anything about it. Most people be like, oh my gosh, I gotta get this fixed. I need to go, how much do you guys charge to fix this, right? It is the same thing. They didn't know they had a problem till I got there. Now, within a period of 30, 45 minutes or an hour, they realize they have a problem and they love the rainbow. They love the way it makes the house smell. They love the way that it, they, they just feel cleaner. They feel like they need it. And I'm a nice guy, I'm dressed nice. I've used their first names because I took the time to memorize them. And I asked a bunch of questions throughout my demo. My demo wasn't boring. We had a good time. And they just said, you know what? We need it, let's go ahead and get it. Right? It makes sense, right? So that's what's gotta happen. But the biggest part of that, y'all, is you gotta pull dirt, right? You can't shortcut this. There's just no shortcut uh, for perfection. You have to do this right. So make sure that you pull 30 cloths every time that you do a demonstration, particularly if they have a hard one, right? Now, when I get done doing that, showing them all the dirt that's on all their different floors, so I wanna say this one more time because I wanna make sure you get it. If they have linoleum in the kitchen, we're gonna vacuum the linoleum. If they have hardwood out here in the, in the living room, we're gonna definitely vacuum the hardwood, right? If they have tile in the bathroom, I wanna try to vacuum the tile in the bathroom. Like we're gonna pull two, two or three, four cloths from all the different types of floors in their home, right? Can I tell you one of the biggest mistakes people make when they, people have no carpet but they have area rugs? is there's one thing they clean, is they take this piece right here and they vacuum the, the, the area rug. That's it. That's all they do the whole demo is they clean on the area rug with this, right? They never go to the bare floors with this. They never use the rainbow on 90% of what they have on their floor is linoleum or hardwood. No, they clean the 5%, the area rug, with this. So then when you get done with the demo and you show the price, the customer says, no more carpet than I have. You know, I can replace these rugs cheaper than I could buy a rainbow. So when they say that, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Jenna, they literally think the only thing they can clean with the rainbow is the area rugs. It's because the dealer didn't show the rainbow on 95% of what they actually have and that's not area rugs, it's bare floors. 
So if I go in a home and they happen to have an area rug, that's great. We will at some point use this piece and vacuum those area rugs. But no, 90% of my demos focused on the bare floors. Okay, because I don't want them to tell me, well, you know, no more carpet than I got, right? Now, one thing that you've got to do, and I want to just say this with a lot of emphasis also, is you have to show them that the rainbow is going to save them money, right? So, you know, all those dirt pads we pulled off those bare floors, you got to take that dirt and you got to take that grit, and I'll show you with this one. So, you're going to take the grit from the bare floor, right? Take this dirt and you're gonna dump it on that piece of cardboard, right? So you got all that dirt on that piece of cardboard. Then you wanna take that piece of cardboard and you wanna lay it in the customer's lap with the dirt on it. So I lay it right here on their knees and then we teach you guys to take the fragrance bottle out and we teach you to show them how smooth it is right there. How many did you get, Sharon? Sharon got seven set, good job. All right, I wanna show them right there in the middle how smooth the plastic is. Then I wanna just rub it in the dirt and then I want to let them feel the bottle now and show them all the scratches, right? And then I explained to them that what scratched this bottle was the grit. See, sand and grit is like a diamond. It'll cut. It has 17 to 32 cutting edges, just like a diamond. It will cut, right? You know, they take this stuff right here, this grit, and they glue this grit down to paper. And when they glue the grit to paper, the sand, down to paper, guess what they make out of it, Shannon, when you glue sand down to paper? It's sandpaper, right? See, sandpaper is used for cutting, right? To cutting the finish off or to smoothing, but it's gotta be really, really super fine grit in order to smooth, right? Uh, so anyway, all right. So see, every time we walk on our floor with that dirt between our feet and your hardwood or between your feet and your linoleum, you know what it's just doing to the finish? It's literally sanding the top of your hardwoods off. It's just literally just sanding the finish off, right? Have you ever heard of anyone saying they had to have the hardwoods refinished, Francesca? Well, here's why. If they have dirt and they walk on it, it's just cutting the finish off. Pretend I took this dirt right here and I turned this dirt pad upside down on the hood of your truck out there. And I went around and around, Sylvia, right? What would that grit do to that, that finish on that ho hood? It would just eat through it, wouldn't it, right? Well, see, if it'll do that to that finish on that clear coat, it'll do the same thing to this polyurethane finish in here on these hardwoods, right? Let me ask you this, not trying to be uh, nosy, but how much did y'all pay for your hardwood floors? Do you remember? And they'll say, well, I think they were like 4,000 or something like that, or 53 or sometimes you're going home they might say 10,000 right depends on the size of the house I said let me ask you a question Candace if, if you ended up and and they got to looking really worn but from the grit who would have to pay to have that fixed and they'll say well, well well we would exactly right and you know how much it would cost to have these floors refinished and they say no I really don't have any idea well listen I do at least two to three thousand dollars at least to have a size a house this size have all the hardwood refinished, right? Because you're gonna have somebody do a good job on it. So Carolyn, Jamie, do you agree like I do that it makes more sense to protect your investment than to have to re replace your, your investment? Does that make sense? Definitely, yes. To protect it, right? Okay, so you gotta do a good job of explaining the grit standard. I don't understand how anybody could do this in 45 minutes. Nope, that's because it can't be done in 45 minutes. Can't be done in an hour. I just wanna keep telling you, if you're done with your demo in 45 minutes and you call me, just know my eyes are rolling, right? Now I'm like, oh my gosh, seriously, you're done? Already? Ah, oh, did you see my eyes roll? Check this out. Oh my gosh, are you done already? Okay, that's literally what I'm gonna do, right? And, and I'm probably gonna say, hold on a second. Hey, Michael, hey, Ryan, would you talk to this person? They're finished on their demo, all right? Because I don't know that I could get through a conversation with you, right? Not without saying something, right? And I shouldn't say, and I'd regret later, right? You gotta do a full demo, right? So anyway, so this, this tool, by the way, is for area rugs. And what else did I say? Mattresses. This is your mattress tool. Did you know that? 
Yeah, this is the mattress tool. So let me honestly tell you, if you'd been here last October, we had a different power nozzle, right? That power nozzle did not do very well on uh, mattresses, all right? I'm embarrassed to tell you that, but it's truth, right? It did not do good on mattresses. I can't really tell you why it didn't do good on mattresses. It just didn't, right? They actually designed this power nozzle for mattresses. You see this little blue open, this little blue button right here? Most of us don't even know what that actually is. So you open it, which is to the right, if you're behind it, if you're looking straight at it, it'd be to the left, but you can actually see completely through the power nozzle, through these holes to the bottom when it's open, right? So what that's designed to do, that is the mattress mode. So you flip it over there to do your mattresses. That way it doesn't stick to the mattress and tear the mattress, right? You won't put a hole in the mattress or anything like that, right? So I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking, my gosh, I don't know about vacuuming people's mattress. I mean, don't people think that's weird when you want to go to their bedroom? Well, it's all in how you word it, right? So yeah, it could be weird if you said, hey, I've been noticing you, girl, all right? Uh, where, where's, your, where's your bed at, all right? I mean, I don't know, that probably wouldn't work, right? But that's not how any of us would say it, right? Uh, so, uh, I mean, well, I know some people who might say it that way, but, uh, you know, anyway, we won't talk about that person. It's only just one person I'm thinking of. So, um, but anyway, what I like to do is I like to either put just one, just the visualizer, put two cloths in right here when I'm going to go to the mattress, right? And then just go ahead and put the mattress tool on and you're good to go, right? So I say, hey, guys, let me show you how our mattress tool works, right? So this tool is specifically designed to have two modes. You, when you got this little switch over to the left here, from where I'm looking, then it's gonna be for, for your bare floors, for, excuse me, for your, uh, for your rugs. But flipping over here, it works great on your mattresses and on your furnishings, right? So let me just tell you this. You remember we said earlier that the dust mites are what cause 90% of the allergies that people have. Well, dust mites live in our mattresses. So what my company allows me to do while I'm here is they allow me to clean one mattress real quick. And uh, so and you, I'm not gonna do your kid's mattress. So just Rick, real quick, where's your, uh, where's your nearest mattress at guys? Now just pick this up, pick the rainbow up, get it in your hands and say, where's your nearest mattress? Okay, that's actually how you get in there. You don't say, where's your bedroom? Okay, say, where's the nearest mattress? And pick this up. Let's go. Where's your nearest mattress? If you're picking this up and you're standing there holding this, guess what they're going to do? They're going to take you usually to the kids' room, okay? So when we get into the kids' room, what we want to do is we want to clean the mattress. But there's a specific way to do this because I don't want to take the sheets off and all that crap, right? If down at the bottom of the foot of the, the, foot of the bed, the bottom, right, we're going to pull the fitted sheet up just a corner, just one corner. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna literally run it between the mattress and the fitted sheet. Guess what I can do? I can actually vacuum all the way to the, uh, to the top of the bed without taking the sheet off. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna vacuum between the fitted sheet and the mattress, do the whole mattress. And then when I, you know, when I take this out right here, when I pop my visualizer open, and I show them those two claws, it's going to be bad, right? One of our dealers actually for a while had a portable little microscope she took with her on demos and she would put the mattress uh, dead skin underneath this little microscope and you could see the stuff moving, right? Because that's where the dust mites actually live. They eat that dead skin right there. Cause you know what all that is, right? It's dead skin, right? It's all dead skin. All right, and it's always the same color, doesn't matter what color the customer is, it's always a light gray color, right? And so um, I wanna show them that and I say, and I hand them that, I say, here, you hold all your dead skin, I'll, I'll let you hold it all, right? And I hand them all the dead skin and they're like, oh, I'm like, yeah, okay, all that's in your mattress. And you can just ask them, hey, when's the last time you vacuumed your mattress? You know what their answer will be? Never, Never. Right? Do you know that they say you should change your mattress or buy a new mattress every eight years? You know who says that, right? 
allergy doctors, right? Well, listen, the reason is, is because you got all that dead skin in there. But if you would just clean it with the mattress tool about every month, you don't have to do it every week, but do it, do it once a month. Just keep your mattress clean. You don't have to replace your mattress. You can keep all that stuff out of there. And let me ask you a question. If I could get all that out of there, you think that would help or hurt your allergies? And they're gonna say that would help my allergies, right? Okay, awesome. Now, when we get done with all that, guess what we have to always do if they have hardwood? Now, this is what the lady did this morning, or did not do this morning. And if you're on the video, whoever you are, I can't remember who you are, I do remember now, but she is not on the video, right? Uh, she did not mop today. She did not use the mop. You gotta use the mop right? Like when I say the mop, you got a mop. So here's, here's the play on words I get. Did you show them the mop? Yeah, I showed it to them, right? No, that's not what I'm saying. When I say show, I mean, did you mop? Did you literally wet the floor? That's my question, okay? Did you mop? You got a mop. You got a mop. I don't care if they have wall-to-wall -wall carpet. We gonna go mop the kitchen. We go mop every time, right? It's a big joke around here. The only time I mop is when I want to make a sale, right? The homes I don't show to mop in is the ones I don't want to sell. And that's ridiculous because we want to sell in every home. So guess which ones I show to mop to? I mop in every home because I want to sell every customer a rainbow, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to make sure we dump the water bowl in the rainbow because you know you got to start with a dry water bowl when you mop, right? I hope you at least know that. So the rainbow bowl is going to be empty, right? You've got water right here in your little tank, right? Drop it right down in there, right? Then, depends on whether they have linoleum or tile, which would mean I'm going to use the bristle. You see those bristles, right? I'm going to use this if they have linoleum and tile. You got that? Linoleum and tile. Okay, if they have hardwood, we're gonna use the Swiffer pad. Don't call it a Swiffer pad, but I shouldn't have said that. Or the blue pad, the microfiber pad, right? So just put the microfiber pad on there. Make sure you got a clean one. That's why we gave you two. When it gets dirty, pull one off, throw it in the washing machine and wash it, and put your clean one back on. So make sure that you've got a clean pad for hardwood, right? Now, have I ever went in a home, Jamie and Caroline, and had to mop the kitchen? because they had tile or linoleum and changed the head over and now i'm going to mop the hardwood in the living room with it yeah i mean it just depends i'm going to do enough that i can make them see the need for this machine right and you just you, there's just more you could show guys than what you're showing think about this what's the problem with the swiffer pad if you have them if you could get them to do this put a new pad on their swiffer and have them to take a couple swipes across the floor then turn it over and show them the grit that stuck to that Swiffer pad, the dirt, the grit. Now, what's going to be the problem if they keep using that same Swiffer pad with grit stuck to it? All they're doing is sanding the rest of their floor off, right? See, that's because the Swiffer pad doesn't have the pulling power and it doesn't have the depth. This has a lot of depth, a lot of, a lot of, uh, weave to it if you see what i'm saying right so the grit's going to go down in because of the power the airflow and the water's going through the pad going into the rainbow bowl but so so i can keep mopping without scratching if that makes sense okay so but we got to mop and then we're going to when we get done mopping you want to show them the water the black water because remember i dumped this and so the only water in here is the water it sucked up when i was mopping right? Because when you pull the trigger, it sprays out, you go over the floor and suck it back up into the dry bowl. So at this point, you've got just a little bit, but it's black water, right? Now, what do we say about that black water? A lot of us just say, look at that, right? You got to go further than that. Say, let me ask you, Ethan, I noticed that you said uh, you use a mop. <clears throat> do you use a mop bucket or you use your sink? What if they say I use my sink? Or what if they say I use my mop bucket? So if they said the mop bucket, I'll say, hey, when you get done mopping, what color is the water? And I'm gonna say, it's black, exactly. It's about that color right there, isn't it? So think about that when you're mopping. Catherine, you're taking a mop 
you're sneaking it in dirty water, you're wringing that dirty water out of that mop, and then you're going over mopping the rest of the floor with dirty water, right? And then we yell at our kids and say, hey, kids, y'all stay off that muddy water till it dries. Okay. No, we just tell our kids to stay off the water, but it's muddy water is what you're, you're, you're actually mopping with, right? See, every time I pulled that trigger on the handle, you know what was spraying out? Clean water, right? And then I suck it right back up. It's a cleaner, more efficient way to clean your home. I can mop your whole house completely dressed up like I am right now, ready to go to church and never even get my hands wet because I don't have to wring a mop out or nothing like that. And I can do it in a third time it takes you to mop. The only thing I got to do when I get done is dump the water out. Right? So you got to sell them on the logic of the mop, right? So when I get done with that demo, I'm just going to show the price like I normally would. It's really, really simple, but here's the difference. They see the value in the product when you do a complete demonstration. When you do a partial demo, honestly, they like it. You did a good job. And the only reason I would even consider buying it is because you're nice. But honestly, I just can't see spending that much money, you know? And that's because we just didn't build enough value. So we can all do a better job on that. Um, the only last thing I would, I would tell you is, um, you know, when you're doing that 20 year sheet and you're talking to them about that last one says a carpet replacement slash hardwood refinishing, you know, you've got to talk about that during your demo or when you ask that question at the end, we talk, you know, you can't say we talked earlier during the demo about how the grit ruins the floor. <clears throat> so what would it cost you to have your hardwoods refinished? As we already said, 2000 bucks, right? See, that gives you that number, right? And if they don't have, um, they don't buy vacuum cleaners, but they buy other cleaning tools like Swiffer mops. Ask them, what do you think you spend a month on Swiffer pads? They might say $15, $20 a month. You take $10 a month over 20 years. How much is that? That's 4,800 bucks. Have you done the math on that? That's not, it's 2,400, I'm sorry. Yeah, 12 times 10, 1,200, right, 2,400. That's almost a rainbow right there, just $10 a month though, right? There's so many ways to sell this rainbow. You just got to be better. Uh, and, and just don't get your mind blown when they don't have carpet, okay? So I think that's it. If anyone has any questions after this meeting, uh, feel, feel free to call me. Again, if you want a refresher, I do believe Ryan is going to post this video up on, the, uh, on our YouTube channel. So if you don't know what a YouTube channel is, um, then I, I, I can't help you because I don't know either. But you can call Ryan. Uh, he sent a link out. I'll get him just to send that out one more time to our YouTube channel. I think you just have to subscribe or like it or, or love it or whatever you got to do. I don't know. And then you can, you can watch all our training videos. But anyway, this video is going to be on there along with another video that I made about 10 years ago. I look a lot younger, but it's, it's the same video. Okay. So thank everybody. We appreciate you joining. Stay safe out there and we'll talk again tomorrow. Okay. Oh, is this technology?